Hey everyone, welcome back to today's video. In today's video, I decided to re-dye one of my making heads. I've actually been thinking about redoing it for a while now and just hadn't had the chance or the time to do it. Um, dyeing takes like process and it just takes time. So her name is Dahlia and I actually colored her, her hair before. Um, so I, she originally had like dark brown hair and uh, I decided to bleach it. When I bleached her hair, I didn't want to bleach all of her hair, so I tried to do kind of like a PC highlighty look, and I knew I was gonna color it over the bleach, so I knew that the whatever the bleach job was, if it was horrible, like it would have been fine because I can just cover it up with color. Um, but anyways, the bleach job turned out really well. I really love it. I actually kept that for a while, and then I decided I wanted to do a fun color. And I wanted something that's super bright and fun, like neon yellow, because I've never done it before. And I don't really want to do it on my hair, just because I feel like against my black hair, um, it just wouldn't look very good. Um, or that I personally wouldn't really like the look, but I wanted to do some kind of bright color because my favorite color is neon yellow and all neon colors. So I decided to do um, pink roots that blended into neon yellow. So, and I tried to make it more on the pastel side just so that um, I could change it pretty easily just because I don't wash mannequin heads very often. So whatever color I do on the head, it stays on for a lot longer than it does on my hair. So this is what it looks like uh, freshly colored. So this is when I colored the first time. Um, I just put the dye on and then I rinsed it with cold water and then I just left it alone. So that was how her hair turned out and I just wasn't very happy with it. The pink wasn't uh, strong enough, it was too pastel-y and I, so it just turned out this like really like light pink and in some areas it was more saturated than others and it just kind of looked like bland like there was no depth to it so i decided to go in with a darker like warm color so like i knew i wanted to be something that was like on the red side um just because i wanted to keep the colors looking similar i didn't want it to be like a blue color because blue mixing with the pink that was already there the little bit of pink that was already there it was gonna make it purple and then the blue and yellow would have turned green and I didn't want to want it to do that so I had to think of a color that wasn't gonna look bad um, so I decided on this like reddish color so I barely diluted it with conditioner so it wasn't anything like pastel colors and I did it on purpose so that I could have that deeper shades just throughout the hair um, the roots just didn't look that good, like the pink didn't look very good to me. So I decided to fix it by using a darker shade. So I'm gonna go mix my color and then I'll go put it on and then show you all the process. For the color, I'm gonna be starting with this pink color. It's a custom one that I made like at some point and I don't remember what else I put in it, um, but it's probably a mix of like pink uh, conditioner and then maybe a little bit of red. Um, I'm not exactly sure. And then I'm gonna take this Ion Color Brilliance um, in the color red and squeeze a little bit in. And in the end, I actually just decided to squeeze all of it in. I just started with a little bit at first, just so that I can see what it looks like. And it just made it a slightly deeper shade, so then I decided to add all of it in. All right, so this is what it looks like after the first wash. So I washed it with shampoo and this neon yellow here looks green and it does have a bit of green in it, but it's mostly just yellow. But you can see the pink, it's faded so much that it kind of looks like a, like a brassy pink here. And um, that's just from one wash. All right, so here I have all of the hair section in three sections. So just one big back section, and then I sectioned out the two front sides. So I'm starting here um, by weaving out the colored part, and I'm looking 
at the color part and seeing how much I have and then I'm leaving out half of that. So I don't need any of the dark brown color because that's not where I'm going to focus on and it's not going to show up. And um, I want to have like strips of this pink coral color and I'm not going to like push it down to the ends just because I do want to keep a lot of that neon yellow. So I'm just putting the dye on the roots and then to the mid shafts and then I'm going to use my fingers to blend it out to the ends. So that just makes it the ends still get a little bit, but it's not so much where it's going to make that big of a difference. With each horizontal section, um, there's going to be more like highlighted pieces than some others. So I'm just making sure to be aware of that. And then when I'm weaving out certain highlighted pieces, I'm always making sure to leave a layer of the original color underneath and then I'll add the new color for the top layer. So I'll always have one layer of the original color and then all second layer will be this new color. So for the back here, I'm only gonna be taking horizontal sections and then for the two front sections, I am gonna be going in diagonal just because I felt like it. When I'm applying this dye, I'm just gonna focus on um, the roots and the mid shafts. So I'm only putting the dye where the roots are and then just a little bit into the middle of the strands. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to blend it all in just to make sure it's all saturated. And then I'm gonna push the, re like the leftover dye, the extras, towards the ends and making sure that it doesn't touch the tip ends, but um, the extras are just enough where I can just kind of blend it into the yellow. This technique just ensures that I get a smooth blend with each strand. And once I've done each section, I am going to wipe my hands off just so that when I'm sectioning the new section, I'm not getting uh, dyes in weird little spots where I don't want them. I just want to make sure that these strands that I am putting the new color on are completely like strips instead of like just weird little spots here and there. So I just want to have a clean look as the end result and by keeping my hands clean throughout the process, it just helps. When I'm sectioning out the new horizontal sections, I'm using my purple comb here that's sitting by the mannequin head and I just take it and brush the hair just so that I can have um, tangled free hair. It just makes the application process a lot easier and a lot smoother. And then I'm also making sure that I only take about an inch deep. Like when I'm sectioning hair, like along the hairline, I, ju I only go an inch up. Um, Cause I don't want it to be like thick strips. I want like little pieces. So by taking um, small sections, that helps me to have more strips. What is it? Now that we're done with the back section, I am gonna go and do the front sections and they were pretty small, so I was actually able to get them done pretty quickly here. And one more thing to add about horizontal section is that if I did happen to do a thicker section, I just make sure to do a thicker weave um, because I'm gonna be starting with more hair in that section then I need to follow it up with more hair. So this process was actually super easy and I didn't even like listen to anything. Normally I do when I'm doing like dyeing because it just takes a long time. But I'd say overall this took maybe like 40 minutes to apply, which is pretty short. When I'm applying dye on Pearl's hair and I do all of her hair, it takes me like an hour at least. So this is super quick here. And Pearl doesn't even have that long hair. like. It's probably a little bit longer than um, Dahlia's, this mannequin heads. And Pearl does have thicker hair, 
um, but still, like, compared to that, that's pretty fast. Once I'm done applying the dye, I'm gonna let it sit for at least an hour and then I'll go rinse it out and then uh, blow dry it and that kind of stuff. Um, I have found that leaving the dye on for an hour does the trick. Like, it's just like the perfect amount of time. Like, it's, uh, it's probably not like too long, but it's not too short. Um, especially for this particular men in head just because her hair is super porous which means that she doesn't hold anything in her hair like even when I get her hair wet for like say I washed her hair um, I've noticed that like her hair just dries so fast um, for example like before I even like go in to like blow dry her hair like her ends are already 75% dry and Normally my process for her hair is I do put in some uh, leave-in conditioner and then some gel in her hair. The leave-in conditioner is just so that I keep her hair nice and healthy and then the gel is to help um, enhance her curls. Putting those two products in only take about five minutes. So I'm just trying to be aware of that and making sure that I keep her hair healthy. All right, so this is what her hair looks like. Now that I've got the dye on, it's actually been soaking for over an hour now. So I'm going to go wash this out, but this is what it looks like right now. So that was the under color, so like the base or the canvas, so my starting point. And I took the this my pink pinkish corally color and I put it just in strips like this and I blended it into the yellow um, because I wanted to add that little funness to it. So um, I'm hoping that this root color here, so where the pink originally was, that it'll turn out this very deep, saturated, bright, like pinkish corally color. And then as it blends into this yellow here, it's actually gonna turn orange because when you mix red and yellow or pink in this case, um, it's gonna turn orange because that's just how the color wheel works. <laughs> so yeah, I just have strips all throughout. And if you look at the ends here, if you look at the ends here, you actually can't see very much of like the strips that I did, which is good. I wanted to keep it that way. I just mostly wanted to focus on the roots. All right, so see here, see how up here you have that red color right here. And then when you blend it down further, you can see that really like yellowy orange right here and that's what I was talking about when you so this is when um, the yellow blends into the old pink that's right here and then this new pink just overlapping everything so yeah so I'm gonna get like hopefully really saturated red like this corally color at the roots and then I have like pops of orange here and there and it'll be so much fun I'm gonna go wash it out and then I'll blow dry it and maybe style it just a little bit and then I'll show you the end result. All right, so I just rinsed it out and I didn't shampoo it. It's just lukewarm water. Um, and I know you're not supposed to use lukewarm water. I don't really care because it's a mannequin head. I don't wash her hair very often, but this is how her hair turned out. So as you can see right here, there's quite a bit of that color right there, but if you just kind of brush it together it just blends in really well and you can see that orange right there and I just love that you can you still have most of this yellow here because I did make sure to keep the color off of the ends um, just like the very tips so you still see from like far away just at first you can see all of that yellow that's in the ends um, but if you look closely you can see like the reds and the oranges and the yellows and I love it see here how you have like that red and then the orange and oh I just love it so the reason I did this is because um, I wanted to give her hair some depth and when you're highlighting hair to give the highlights and um, to make the highlights like seem brighter you actually want to have um, the layer underneath the highlights to be a darker color um, and since in my case, I wanted the actual color itself to have depth, I needed to go in with a darker color 
um, that went well with this and I want it to be something bright and fun so I decided to do another round of pink um, slash coral color so that's why I did those strips um, so that I can have just some more depths in there and just have um, different shades of lightness and darkness in the colors. Here's what it would look like if you were to pull it back. This is still wet so not you know exactly what it's gonna look like but I'm already loving it and it's wet like this isn't even like what it's gonna look like in the end. So I'm gonna go dry it and then we'll finally be able to see what it actually looks like. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy watching the process. And this is, I am not a professional hair colorist. I am not a professional, I don't know, curly hair person. Um, so I didn't really know how to style her hair. I just did the best I could. I don't know, to me it kind of turned out okay. Um, but I love the color. I It was just an idea in my head and I just, the technique that I use um, was just what made sense to me. It's probably not at all professional or anything like that or like the technical way of doing it um, but it made, made sense to me and it got what I wanted. I love the color. I think it kind of looks like fiery colors like because the roots are red, that deep like reddish pink color and then you can see like bits of orange and then you got the bright yellow ends. It just reminds me of like fire and I love that you can see the little bits of like red and orange just throughout the neon yellow. I just want it to be like a little peekaboos of red and orange. So yeah, overall I really like it and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!